welcome to the Metal Voice. And Alan, for the first time, we, we grab somebody from war. It's Blothar yes. himself. This is a first here on the Metal Voice. Blothar himself. That's right. <laughs> the Berserker Blothar here in my Antarctic fortress with beautiful orange drapes. <laughs> you know what? The There's a new album. The, the new Dark Ages is going to be released June the 30th. Uh, June, sorry, June 3rd. Yep. New album's going to be released. Record. Fantastic. But first, I just, I, quick overview of who Gwar is for the people out there who don't understand who these Gwar Warriors. species are. <laughs> just give us a quick overview. Well, Gwar is a, a, a group of intergalactic warriors who were uh, banished. You know, I mean, basically, think of F Troop in space. No, nobody's nobody listening to you is old enough to know what the hell that means. I'm barely <laughs> old enough to know what it means. But basically, it's just a bunch of clowns uh, that can't do anything right. And so we were banished to this planet by our uh, supreme commander and uh, charged with, I mean, ostensibly the mission was, you know, take things over. But then, of course, when we got here, there's no, nothing here but dinosaurs and, and proto-humans running around. So... <laughs> Uh, we uh, started screwing things up to the point that uh, he wound up having to entomb us on ice before we managed to destroy the entire planet. Uh, and that's where we've, that's where we've been until, uh, until the uh, glam rockers using hairspray during the eighties melted the ozone layer. And then, <laughs> you know, we wound up waking up. So what about uh, the bovine flatulence? That also <laughs> contributed. Bovine it flatulence. It did. You're right. You're right. <laughs> All right. So, but the interesting thing is, not only are you guys, you know, outcasts of your own sort of civilization, but you manage to record music. We do. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that was part of the plan. You know, Scoby. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, Sleazy P. Martini, uh, who was the manager of Guar, he he discovered us in our Antarctic lair and. He took one look at us and he was thinking to himself, how can I make money off of these guys? Uh, and he thought, well, I'll, I'll turn them into a rock band. You know, that they, <laughs> they look stupid <laughs> enough to be a rock band. And so that's, that's what we did. We, we became, he sat us in front of, uh, of course, back then in the uh, mid eighties, it was uh, MTV, you know, uh, and professional wrestling. And uh, we learned how to speak English. And then the next thing, you know, we were rock stars. There you so, go. Simple as that. Are you are you guys COVID resistant? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> we're COVID compliant at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, we definitely uh, are uh, uh, immune to the disease. That's for sure. Uh, we couldn't afford. I mean, you know, and and the truth of the matter is that it was us. We're the ones who did it. Of course, we started this. Uh, by by uh, you sneezed on a bat and then somebody ate a bat. Is that the, was that the story? I, I heard about. Well, I mean that's what they say, but it was actually pangolin sex that that uh, you know sex with pangolins. That's that's what did it. Uh, that's how it tra <laughs> it dra jumped to Guar and then Guar gave it to the humans. All right. But we couldn't afford COVID twenty, so we only got a nineteen. You can you can't drive a twenty off the lot. Let me tell you. <laughs> So what? Why are we in the new dark ages? Let, let's get straight to it. Well, I don't know whether the the uh, why we're there, but uh, somehow I think that's exactly where we are. Uh, humanity has managed to. Uh, if you look at the sorts of uh, situations that exist in the world, this uh, crisis of truth and uh, humanity uh, really turning on itself. Uh, it, these conditions spawned by a, by an ever increasing technology. You know, these are all things that that happened during the Dark Ages. Uh, the sort of uh, and and at least part of it came from recognizing some of the language that that groups like QAnon were using uh, when they're talking about conspiracy theories and about uh, adrenochrome and you know, baby killing and all of these things. It sounded really sounded like something Guar should be involved in. <laughs> but, but certainly it was, uh, you know, I mean, I recognize that rhetoric. Wow, you know, that's, that's the way that they uh, would uh, attack uh, Jewish people during the Middle Ages, right? I mean, this, this is 
so these are some of the same ideas that have been holding humans back for centuries. And uh, it really does, look, and it ironically, you know, it, it, these are spawned by, at least in part, by, by technology, by humans gaining access. And you would think that by now humans would just be a big floating brain with no arms or legs that blissfully exists in a state of absolute peace and spiritual harmony. But that's, that's not where technology has put us. It's more blood and guts. And, uh, you know, it's kind of predictable. I mean, it, it's been trending that way for an awfully long time. Is the so whole we're, 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 Go ahead, sorry. We're cur cursed to, we, we can't learn from history, it seems, and we're cursed to repeat it. Are, are humans the smartest species on the planet? Let, let's uh, just, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Of course not. I mean, you know, cows are far more intelligent than humans. <laughs> I mean, just look at how, how other creatures you know, look at their bearing, the things that they're interested in, what's important, you know? I mean, do you think that we're smarter than dolphins? I think dolphins look at us and say, what a bunch of fucking dumbasses. Look at them. They're running around. We, we sit out here and swim all day and eat fish. That's it. That's our job. We swim, we eat fish. The humans, they're trying to get jobs. They're paying bills. They're driving cars. They're fucking up the entire world. Uh, you know, I mean, who's smarter in that situation? I, I'd go with the dolphins. I, I, I vote for the dolphins as well. Like I'm hearing a lot of, and you know, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm hearing a lot of uh, sabotage. I'm hearing Alice Cooper. I'm hearing even hints of quiet riots sometimes in the music. I mean, <laughs> am I, am I, and sometimes I even hear hints of Voivod. So I mean, oh, yeah. this is a very uh, diverse record that uh, you Gwarians have put together. So maybe you want to speak to sort of the musical aspect and the influences on this album, just to give people, give people an idea what this album sounds like musically. Well, I mean, one thing that it sounds like, to me, it sounds like a record that needed to be made right now, right? I mean, there's two, uh, you put these records on, it feels like they all sound the same. Uh, bands are very into repeating themselves in a lot of ways. And then, and, and, and the changes, like you read these interviews with the bands and it's like, <laughs> they act like what they've done is so revolutionary. It's like, oh, you've changed some slight thing, right? Like, but pretty much it's the same, the same thing. And Guar actually is very liberated in that we don't have to make the same record uh, um, uh, over and over again. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, we, we, <laughs> we use a lot of tritones on the, in some songs, which is a uh, sort of the mark of the Voivod, I suppose. Um, and Voivod, you know, they're like us. They're a band from outer space. Uh, we definitely feel a kinship with them. Um, apparently that's what space sounds like is lots and lots of tritones. <laughs> <laughs> tritones and semitones uh, and odd time signatures. Um, but no, I mean, in some sense we wanted to have, I think that comes out of having some songs that we wanted to sound mechanical. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's what we did. The songs that are supposed to sort of reflect uh, uh, technology and, and definitely a theme that Voivod would deal with themselves. And, and then, you know, also we wanted to have songs that captured the, just a, you know, almost an Alice Cooper feel, right? Like, uh, uh, and, and that, were, that were varied enough, you know, that, that, that it would satisfy us as musicians. I mean, that's what we're interested in doing. I, I think that, you know, this way madness lies if you spend your time trying to uh, do what you think people want you to do. Um, I think you have to do what you want to do. I mean, at this point, making 15 records, it's a fair question why Guar makes records at all, right? Uh, well, I mean, the answer to that is that we're not done. We've got things to say. And I think that this record uh, shows that uh, there are things we can teach, right? Uh, even other bands. I mean, this is a band that has never gotten its due musically. Uh, the great Mike Gitter from uh, the old uh, rock and roll magazine Cream uh, back in the day uh, once told me, well, you know, Guar has quietly been making really good albums for many years. And I was like, I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment, Mike. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, think I think he's absolutely right. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I also think that one thing about this record is that uh, having a voice on it that uh, is odorous, odorous is very polarizing sort of 
uh, approach <laughs> to music. Just, just and, so and everybody, we, you know, just remembers that Odorous died uh, what, 2014, yes. right? Yeah, 2014, yeah. And, the and, singer, the old and, and do you find that people have finally got over that hump and have accepted that Blothar now is the, the, the king of the jungle? I don't know. I mean, it, it, we don't we don't really care. I mean, it, it's like it should people still ascribe, uh, you know, I mean, you do hear people that don't. Right. I mean, there's people that uh, still I mean, you look, you ask me, I love Bon Scott, <laughs> but Brian does a pretty damn good job holding it down. Right. Uh, <laughs> And, and I'm never going to stop loving Bon Scott. I feel like that's that's the way, you know, some people feel about it. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, we have, have the luxury of, of being able to keep going because Guar is a, a band that's the project of a lot of effort by a lot of different people. It's an ensemble effort. And, uh, and it was always that. So... It, it, and and odorous you know to us who who were there from the beginning odorous wasn't the original singer of war uh, there were at least two singers before him uh so it, it's a project that 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 we've all been part of for a very long time and that we watched grow and that we understand uh and like i said i mean as long as we're having fun and and we feel like we have something to say who cares if they accept it or not uh, but yeah, that's I think that, the true spirit of, of, of yeah, gore, right? right? Who cares? But by and large, I think that I think that that they have. I think that you get, you know, there's always going to be people who don't, people who can't. Uh, but we just keep going. And if you come to a guar show, I think you get exactly what you uh, what you always got, which is a, a great rock and roll band doing crazy stuff on stage. And, and I'm going to tell you something, Blothar. Me and Alan, we were discussing, you know, the album before. And we go, wow, this is pretty good. I mean, this. I would say, as a guy who's, who's who's sort of followed the band over the years, this is probably, and I, I, I think it's one of your best albums. You know, it's it's on par with your other great albums. That's what I'm trying to well, say. Well, thank you, thank you. I I appreciate that. And From an Earthling have... to a Gorian, this is what I'm telling you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, I I really appreciate. <laughs> and I know you want to eradicate our species. Despite all that, I'm okay. Well, it's hard for me to want to eradicate a couple dudes like you, you know, <laughs> wearing your glasses. Yeah. Old metal dudes. Come on. <laughs> I think I share a kinship with you. There you go. Hey, the, the new Dark Ages. I'm just trying to, and I, I, let me start with, I'm a big fan of titties, but I'm just trying to find a correlation of uh, uh, getting the titties out and uh, the world has gone to spit, you know. <laughs> What's the role of social media in the new Dark Ages? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, that song in particular, you know, if, if the blood of gods was uh, one of the themes on that record, which is the, the record we did before this one, was uh, humanity really struggling. I mean, I mean, Gore really struggling to keep up with humanity, which had become so uh, just violent and so unpredictable. It's like, uh, uh, you know, I mean, when you <laughs> Gore, cutting off someone's head used to mean something. <laughs> Now you turn it on, you turn on the TV and you can see it right uh, in real life. You, and so uh, how can, how can you really keep up with it? Uh, and this record is more like, we just gave up and we're like, you know, we're going to, we're going to call out what's going on, but we're just going to kick up our feet. And that's what that moment is in that song, the new dark ages, you get your titties out and put them on the glass. You know, it's just Guar uh, kicking our feet up and watching the world burn in a sense. And that's really, more of the attitude uh, that's on that's on this record. Um, as far as the question, you also had a question in there about the the role of social media in today's yeah. dark, new dark ages. Well, I mean, certainly the role of information uh, is that uh, while it, it's a great irony that while there is so much more information at hand, there is such little knowledge that's coming out in the world right now, uh, or people, people seem to lack knowledge, people seem to lack wisdom, although they have a lot of access to information. And, uh, you know, so that's certainly, that's so certainly- So you're talking about fake news and filtered news. Is that what you're saying? There's a, are you exposing that? Well, I mean, I'm exposing myself, to be honest. But uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, in a sense, that's what we're doing. I'm, I'm moving with you now. We're walking. Yes, I, I, I see that your cave in Antarctica, Antarctica is very nice. 
Yeah, isn't that isn't that nice? They add to Arkham Fortress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite lovely. What but about the this talk? Because uh, I okay, just sorry, sorry. That my, uh, my my com computer is uh, dying here. So okay, let's see. There All we right. are. What about uh, there's a documentary? It, was it has it been finished? Or where are you with that? I, I'm not even sure. Well, the documentary is actually finished, uh, and it's, uh, I think it's going through a final edit here and there, but uh, by and large, it's done, and uh, I think that people are going to love it. You know, it's, uh, it's guar at our guariest, and it really explains a lot about the band, about the, the human side of guar, uh, which, believe it or not, does exist, right? Uh, guar does uh, we do have human thralls who busily produce this album, uh, or not this album, but every album and every Gua show. And uh, that's very much what, what the documentary is, is it, 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 it covers that story, which in a lot of ways is the most interesting story when it comes to Gua. I mean, we, we're a band that tells stories, uh, but the real side of it was always fascinating. And there really is nothing like it. Uh, there's nothing like what Gua puts on stage but there's also nothing like the organization that makes it. And uh, I mean, I can't find anything. And I was trained to look for things like this, right? Like uh, 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 my human thrall is an academic. One of the things we do is, you know, find something like this so you can grab a hold of it and understand and explain it. I can't find anything uh, that, that's like Guar. Um, so, you know. Is there a release date? Like, is there a plan release date, tentative release there date? There is, yeah. It's coming out right around the album, right around the same time as the album, a little bit uh, later, but uh, it'll be out. Uh, I can't remember the exact date. I, I don't think it's September. I think it's July that it comes out. And and is it, what kind of format? Are we looking at DVD? Is it on a streaming service? Do you have, it's do you going have... to be, there's some, there's a big announcement that's coming about ah. how it will be available streaming, but it's not uh not yet. Uh, I, I don't think we can talk about that yet, but it's going to have a, at least somewhat of a theatrical release. Um, I think it might, might wind up playing at cinema draft houses and things like that as well. Uh, and also uh, there is a streaming release of it that's going to be a pretty big deal and we're very excited about it. Okay. So besides cheese pizza, what role does karma play in blood libel? <laughs> karma? Well, Karma. well, I mean, you know, the, a pretty, a pretty big one. I mean, uh, that's really Guar. Uh, you know, we talked about earlier the middle, the middle ages, the dark ages, and black, and uh, uh, and some of the ideas that that are reflected in the song "Blood Libel." Um, certainly, uh, uh, I think that 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 looking at the way things have happened, the way that 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 humans sort of assign a scapegoat. Uh, we really wanted to write a song that, that looks at that. Plus it's just fascinating, right? The, the shit that humans believe. Uh, the idea that, you know, it's somehow, I mean, I, I understand why it's attractive. Yes, the world isn't waking up and going to your bullshit job. The world is actually a world where people are mysterious predators and there's like, <laughs> You know, there's a where where Hillary Clinton is ripping off somebody's face and wearing it. That's the real truth. You know, I mean, what a what a load of shit. And so, I mean, like I said, I mean, it sounds exactly like something Gua should be involved in. If somebody's wearing a baby's face, it's gonna be me and the Pope. <laughs> Let me ask you this: Given the fact that you're not human, does that give you a sort of a extra? perspective that you can share with the world that you couldn't if you were human? I think so. I think absolutely that Guar is allowed to say some things that, uh, uh, you know, and that, that, that theme makes an appearance on the, on the record too, too, that, uh, I mean, certainly humans have gotten more and more restrictive uh, in their uh, freedom of expression. And uh, Guar really uh, stakes a claim and, and in, in a sense being, uh, aliens from outer space. I think that we're allowed some leeway to say some things that other people aren't, uh, and and we intend to use that very irresponsibly. I can promise you that. Whatever. Yeah, it does afford us perspective. Yes, I think so.
So if somebody gets on the stage at a Gore show and then wants to Will Smith you, what, what do you do? What, what's going to be the turnout? I'm going to pants them. You know, if Will Smith came up to me and smacked me in the face, then I would pull his pants right down, right there. <laughs> Just drop them to his ankles. And then I'd bend him over and introduce him to one of my four wieners. <laughs> <laughs> what about working with Lizzie Hale on this? I think you're, it's the cutter, right? Yeah. What was, the cutter, what was that yeah. like, you know, female species and Gorians? Like, what was that? What was that collaboration? Uh, I mean, you know, like? this is a song that uh, is kind of risky uh, topic wise, right? This mm -hmm. is not, uh, uh, believe it or not, this, this, <laughs> this is a fine line from Gwar to Walk. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted to do it. I mean, you know, uh, we wanted and we wanted to have a voice on this record that uh, was not our voice, especially in this song. It felt important uh, to have uh, someone uh, a who can actually sing her ass off, which uh, Lizzie mm -hmm. certainly can do. Uh, and we knew we knew Lizzie. We share a management company. We also share. Uh, uh, we, she's done some. Uh, some uh, interviews for us and things like that on our uh, our web series that we did and she's just a a great talent and she's a wonderful person uh who loves guar so uh we thought to ourselves you know let's let's we need somebody to sing the part of the cutter uh who better to do it than lizzie hale and uh, she did a wonderful job yeah she's a great singer she's a great singer I also hear some Maiden in uh, Berserker mode. I oh, mean, hell I hear yeah. a little bit of those harmonies, those guitar harmonies happening. Yeah. I mean, is Aryan Maiden, like, is Eddie sort of like someone you look up to? Well, I mean, Eddie, yes. Uh, Steve Harris is an old lady, basically. Like, I mean, they all are just a bunch of British old women at this point. But, <laughs> or at least that's how they act, right? Sipping I'm not saying tea. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, uh, you know, but 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 it is very uh, very odd to me that uh, Steve Harris. I love Iron Maiden. I, it always bothered me that Steve Harris has such a problem with punk rock for some reason, um, especially when you can obviously hear it in some of what they're doing around the Killers era. Um, but you know, Iron Maiden's a band that that uh, I think that you can hear it more than in the. Uh, uh, than in the guitars. I think it's in the bass guitar as well. You know, uh, uh, Steve Harris is a, a, a big influence on Guar. Uh, and uh, whether he likes it or not, and he probably doesn't like it. <laughs> Nettie? I don't know how much time we have left, Jim. Yeah, yeah, sure. We can wrap it up. Uh, is there anything, Blothar, that you want to tell humanity? Well, you know, first of all, I want to apologize to Steve Harris. I didn't mean to call you an old lady. <laughs> It's just that you kind of look like one and you drink tea. So I don't know. Um, but uh, has a pint from now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he does. You're right. Uh, no, I, 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 you know, you know, we love, we love Iron Maiden. We love Ronnie James Dio. We love heavy metal. That, that's the greatest thing that humanity ever gave the world is this music. So uh, we're, we're happy to be a part of it uh, or miserable to be a part of it as the case may be. <laughs> Happily miserable to be making humans happy and miserable. Well, just one la last question to end on. Johnny Depp or Amber Heard? Well, you know, I like Johnny Depp. I certainly like his attitude. I like the way he mumbles and has an unrecognizable accent that's impossible to place. Really just talks like Jack Sparrow all the time now. Uh, <laughs> But anybody who takes a dump in the bed is okay by me, so I'm going to go with Amber Heard. <laughs> All right, Bruce Dickinson or Paul Diano? Paul Diano, come on. <laughs> I mean, there's no question. I know he's like a roofer in South London now, but come on, what a great, what a great voice and the hair up in nails. That's probably why Harris was so aggro about punk rock. <laughs> All right, that's it. All right, Blotho, <laughs> Gore, the New Dark Ages, June third. 2022, we're expecting up. the documentary, which I'm literally looking forward to, a tour. You guys are going yeah. on tour? Maybe you want to just plug that quickly? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to be out with it. We've got a wrestling show coming up where we're going to take on the tag team of the uh, Prime Minister of China and uh, 
and Vladimir Putin. So that's exciting. Uh, we're going to put up a wrestling ring on stage, play some rock and roll and wrestle. Uh, and then we also have, uh, after that, when we do the touring for the album, you're going to see all of this. Uh, I mean, I, one thing we didn't talk about is that the album is paired with a graphic novel on mm. C2. Uh, and, and it's kind of the first time that we've done that. I mean, Guar has put out a lot of comics, but we've never put out an album and a comic basically at the same time and had them go together i mean every gore record is a is a uh, a concept record but this one maybe more so than most because it follows that narrative and then people are going to see some of that narrative on stage when they come see the band perform live so a lot of the characters out of the novel and out of the record will be there uh and it's going to be you know really the biggest show certainly the most expensive show that we've ever done uh so it'll be it'll be fun to watch all right. Any uh, fi- we're, we're, we're in Canada. Any final thoughts before our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? Oh, uh, you know he's so cute, isn't he? I mean, he's really like, you know, I, I Justin Bieber. I mean, he's he's just adorable. I mean, as far as world leaders go, I just want to pinch his little hiney. He's so cute. But I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, Canada. I, it was a long time before I figured out that it wasn't just one big, ugly state. I thought it was just a state, like bigger than Texas. But now I understand that it's not. It's its own country. And it should start acting like it, damn it. And it should, and frankly, the wall should be built between the United States and Canada because that's who should be coming over our borders. That's who we want. <laughs> Come on, Canada, invade. You- what I'm hoping is that Canada will literally launch an attack on the United States and take over the whole place. That would be great, wouldn't it? Tim Hortons everywhere. That's right. Our guest, Blothar from Gwar, thank you so much for being on the show. No problem.